the left is a new Wix oil er, air filter. Um, I never buy the cheapest air filters. I want I wanted to get a K and N, but I got it, man. They're seventy bucks, and I just can't swing that right now. Bad enough that was thirty bucks for the Wix, and I could have gotten a cheap filter, fifteen dollar filter, but I'm not. Don't do that. Um, and I replace them about every 10,000 miles, normally. Uh, and then, you know, we got spark plugs and wires. I did get Iridium. AC Delco spark plugs. It's going in a Chevy. I've always been taught you run an AC in a Chevy. You run Auto Lights in, or Motocraft in a Ford. And you run Champions in Chrysler's. I mean, that's the way I was taught. NGK makes a good... <coughs> excuse me. NGK makes a really good spark plug. And I've always had good luck with them in all my motorcycles. So for foreign cars and stuff, I do recommend the NGK plugs. Um, so anyway, we've got the plugs and wires. And then on the far right is an idler pulley. I've got a bad idler pulley that squeaks like a stuck pig whenever you run the truck. So I do need to replace that. So all that being said, I'm going to get started working on this thing. I'll show you that air filter, but uh, for the time being, I got to stick the camera on the charger. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in a little while. Here's what's left of my filter. See where the mice chewed it? This was all full of mouse nest, and they just stuck that back in the truck. You can still see chunks of that crap on there. They didn't even blow it off. Didn't even blow it off. Drives me nuts. I am so angry about that. I'll be back. Here's a little tip when you're doing your spark plugs that can save you a little hassle in the future. Uh, new wires don't come with a heat shield on them. The old ones have a heat shield. I kind of bunged up the end a little bit, which isn't a big deal. Just kind of straighten her out with a pair of pliers a little bit. Because it doesn't have to be perfectly round there. But this is on there for a reason. And they just slip right off. Slip the new one on. Slurp, slip it right on your new wire. And you're ready to go. That heat shield can save you a lot of hassle. If that melts, you're going to be arcing to the block and having all kinds of hassles. So don't forget to put your heat shield on. So this is a new spark plug. And that's what your uh, electrode should look like. At least on these platinum plugs. These are also platinum. And you can see, hopefully, how much that wore down. And the gap is about 70 thousandths on this, and it's supposed to be 60. So, <laughs> uh, there's a pretty big difference there. You can see the erosion. 160,000 miles. Uh, I just talked to the guy I got the truck from. He said he never changed them. So, I think we're looking pretty good. Hopefully, all this is going to help my fuel economy quite a bit. But, this is the last plug to go in. I tried to set up the camera so you could actually see me changing the plugs. But, I, don't, I need some kind of a windshield mount or some such goofiness to put in there. And I don't have one for this camera. I don't have one of them fancy GoPros like some folks do. So, there's no footage of me actually changing the plugs, which would have been funny because the back ones on the uh, the right bank, I had to do some acrobatics to get in there, and you would have laughed like heck when you saw it. <laughs> but fat guy flopping around on a pickup. But that's it. Uh, so I'm gonna get these in. Get this last plug in. Uh, get my last wire on. And then we'll go on. I gotta change that idler pulley and get the air filter in, and I'm done. I got another quick tip for you. This is a spark plug socket. They usually have a hex on the one end of them. But usually, inside them, there's a rubber piece of rubber in there. So when you put your spark plug in there, it has something supporting the top of it a little better. My rubber's been gone for years, and when it comes down to it, it's really simple to just make one. I took one of my spark plug boots 
off the first pl plug wire that I pulled. I pulled the wire off and before I even used the socket I took and I cut about half an inch off, right about right about there, about half an inch, and trimmed it so that it would fit down into the socket like that. I just did that with a utility knife. Didn't need anything fancy. Stuck it down in there. Use the screwdriver to push it all the way down because it's got to be all the way down. And you probably can't see it, but it's in there now. And you just push it all the way down. This is a 5 8 plug socket. I used to have a 13 16 too because used to be a thing. I'm an old guy. Um, but that solves the problem and when you pull your plug out and you take it away the plug will stay in there then and you don't drop it on the ground that way. So that's just a helpful little tip. Um, you can use a regular socket too and just cut it so that it fits as far in as it goes as it can. You need about a half an inch piece and that will solve, what it does is it helps keep it stable in the socket so that you don't crack the uh, insulator, which it fits in there and it won't, you won't crack the insulator part um, and it helps to hold the plug and you can still pull it right off and the rubber usually stays in there I lost the rubber for this many moons ago and uh, that's a quick fix and it's simple just a utility knife is all you need so I just finished it got my air filter in um, Sprayed out my throttle body a little, get the carbon and crap out of there that was in it. Sprayed, uh, blew out my air box good so there ain't any chunkies still sitting in there. And, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna go grab my keys and fire it up and take it for a little test drive. So I'll be back. Well, took it for a test drive. Runs. Uh, seems to have a little better throttle response, which is something kind of nice. So, there is that, and I don't know what else to say. It took me a long time because I, I can only stand for about 15 minutes, and then I've got to sit and take a break because my back just can't handle it. And between my back and my knees and every other damn thing that's wrong with me, I fought with it for about six hours. I didn't really fight. I mean, I knew what I was doing. It, and it went pretty smooth. There was no fighting, aside from breaking that stupid coolant sensor. But even that was a piece of cake to replace because it was right in the open. Um, so I did plugs, wires, new air filter, cleaned out the air filter box, sprayed down my throttle body to get some of the gunk out of there, sprayed my mass airflow sensor to uh, just to clean it everything was exposed I just did everything like that uh, changed that air, air filter to the new wicks and uh, idler pulley on the uh, belt drive which there's still something squeaking it ain't nearly as loud as it was so there must be another pulley squeaking in there a buddy of mine kind of thought it was the alternator I sure hope not damn them things are expensive about 200 bucks I just don't have that. <laughs> and it's charging. It's doing everything it's supposed to. Seems dumb to replace it for a bearing. I don't know what that was. Something fell. So, um... Uh, so that's about all there is to really say. It runs, it drives. I'll open the tonneau cover when I fill the tank tomorrow. And I'll check my mileage. Um, 
I was going to check it again with the tonneau cover closed because I had some freeway driving in there, but really I don't think it would have made that much difference. Um, Mythbusters had an episode, I don't know how long ago, where they tested all that on a pickup. They left the, air, the tailgate down, they had an air gate in there, and a uh, tonneau cover and a camper shell and the whole works. They tried everything and did some pretty accurate testing. And the pickups are just made to uh, work with the box open and the tailgate up. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. So we'll open her up and run it like it's supposed to be in. I guess see what kind of mileage I get. I'm home I'm shooting for 16, 17. Um, I didn't put any performance parts in it, so we'll see. So I'll get back with you with those test results. Stay safe. God bless.